So you're excited. You got the cool little box Mac Studio thing. You took it out of the box and then you realized that's it. It's just a computer. There's no accessories. Let's talk about some accessories for video editors. What's up, Internet? Robert Teager. I'm back here again with another video. Today we are talking about the top accessories for the Mac Studio if you're a video editor. I've got a whole bunch of experience with this thing. I've had it for a couple months now, and I'm going to give you my top accessories that I use on a daily basis as a professional video editor. Now, as you would expect, and what you've probably seen on the internet so far, is you need a mouse and you need some sort of keyboard. And now I have a kind of a different way of looking at this thing. The first thing I have is a roller ball mouse. Give me one second. I promise it'll all make sense in just a second. I have been using these little roller bar mouses for a really long time. I grew up in a music background in music studios, and that was kind of the thing that we use from that standpoint. And to me, the trackball mouse allows me to cover a ton of real estate on my screen. I've got a big 37 inch 4K monitor and going from one corner to the other, uh, moving my mouse all around when I need to make precise edits in terms of my placement of my cursor and all the different cuts that I make, I need to have the ability to cover a lot of screen area very quickly. So this Logitech mouse, I'll link in the description below. It's wireless Bluetooth or whatever it is, the connectivity, uh, and I love it. It's not the newest thing, but it's definitely ergonomic and it's something that I've been using for the last several years, something that I really love. You can hate on me in the comments if you want to, but it, give it a try, I promise. Now this one might throw you for a loop. I also bought the Magic Trackpad for the Mac Studio as well. Now here, I, I, I really didn't know if I was going to like this at first, but it turns out it's actually a really great addition to the mouse. Now the reason that I use this the most is really just kind of scrolling back and forth and making sure that I can get to different areas of the computer with ease. I also use it really easily to right click. And so what you'll see is that I use the trackball on the top of my desk and I've got a keyboard tray on the bottom and I kind of switch back and forth between the two depending on the needs that I have. But having both for different reasons is something that I've actually grown really accustomed to and something I like quite a bit. The next thing I have is the Magic Keyboard because I love the Touch ID. Uh, it does seem to be a little flimsy to me though and it wasn't something that I could actually keep on my keyboard tray without it wobbling back and forth and sliding all over the place. So with that in mind, I got these kind of ergonomic foam pads, both for the Magic Trackpad and the Magic Keyboard. It keeps them nice and secure for the most part, and it stops that wobble back and forth that I was experiencing earlier. Uh, I like the really thin nature and the height of those keys. I'm not a huge mechanical keyboard person, so that kind of low profile is something that I really like. But if you're not into that, something like the Logitech MX keys works great as well. It's something that I've typed on quite a bit and it still does have a low profile, but with a lot more action in the keys. So if you're not looking for something that's as small and thin as the Magic Keyboard is, give that one a shot as well. So the next two things are strictly from a matter of connectivity. If you have the Mac Studio or you've been looking, there's really one audio port and a three and a half mil AUGS phone jack. So really, if you don't have something that is able to capture different types of audio outputs and put external monitors in there, you're kind of SOL. So what I opted to do was to get a Mackie big knob, just a passive big knob that's there. And that allows me to go audio out of the Mac Studio into one of the switching, either A or B, into the back of the Mackie big knob. And then I can connect my studio monitors to the back of the Mackie big knob. And then it's got this nice, really satisfying satisfying dial that I can use to kind of bring my volumes up or down. I can also switch between two types of monitors, although I only have one right now on my desk, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, you can switch between different inputs. You can mute them. You can attenuate the signal. You can do all sorts of things. This is a metal construction with a big fat metal knob that's got kind of texture on it, so it's easy to grab. It's really well constructed, and it's definitely something that I love. It's got a nice profile that sits kind of at the back of my desk, easy to reach, easy to use, volume up and down. It does exactly what it's supposed to do for under 80 bucks. I'll put a link in the description for that one as well. Now, I know that the Mac Studio has a ton of outputs on the back of the computer. It also has two USB-Cs on the front as well as an SD slot. Awesome in terms of connectivity, but it still left me needing a couple of other things. Enter the Satechi Hub. Now this thing is actually made for the Mac Mini. It's made to just stack right on top of the Mac Mini, but 
if you know, this is just the Mac Mini or the Mac Studio, excuse me, is the Mac Mini on steroids. We put stilts on it. So it works just the same. Now, the thing I love about this is it gives me additional imports for a micro SD. It gives me an SD card slot. It gives me three USB type A's in the front. It also gives me a headphone jack in the front of this, uh, which is really helpful because as I just mentioned with the Mackie Big Knob, I'm running an audio out into there. So if for some reason I needed an additional headphone setup, maybe everyone's sleeping or I need to mix something in a particular way, I can go headphone out from the front of the Satechi. The other thing I love about this thing is that it gives you an option to put an NVMe M.2 SSD drive inside of the hub itself. It connects to the back of the Mac Studio via USB type C. And so now I have a terabyte worth of storage that's an, an extra USB C that I put onto my computer so that I don't have to go overboard in terms of the internal storage I put on the Mac Studio. It's obscene the amount that they charge for external storage and I'm constantly running shuttles or RAID drives as well. So to have this super fast one terabyte drive that I can store all of my sound effects, all my LUT packs, all the different types of uh, transitions and things that I have that I'm using on a regular basis that just stay native to the machine is an awesome addition for this particular hub. Uh, I also connect my Logitech Rollerball mouse via the Bluetooth and the USB type A. Um, so it's really just a great addition for extra ports, extra hub stuff and extra storage. I love this thing. I think it's a hundred bucks. Link down in the description for you to check out. Now, I know I was just talking about audio with the Mackie Big Knob, but I want to take a second to talk about audio again, because as you guys know, your boy loves sound. Let's talk monitors. Now, this thing really comes with just a dinky little speaker in the back. It's not going to suffice. You need a pair of external monitors. And my choice has been something I've been using for the last 15 years, and that's the Yamaha HS50s. This is a five inch driver with a tweeter on the top. And I used these when I started my audio studio days back, you know, 15, almost 20 years ago. And they've stood the test of time. They're not cheap. I think they're around 400, 500 bucks. Uh, but what I'm able to get out of that at this point is just an unbelievably crisp audio uh, that really gives me the ability to mix and create a really diverse, immersive sound experience. I know the price might scare a couple people away in terms of what they're going to spend and what they're willing to spend. There are a bunch of options in terms of monitors out here, but I personally think that you should spend a little bit of extra coin to just make sure that your desktop setup is something that you could not only mix and edit and do all those things into, but if you ever had to experience a really rad piece that has great audio production, you can do so with ease with these monitors. Now, all this Mac Studio accessory stuff is super rad if you're a video editor, but it means nothing if you don't have the techniques and the skill set to do that. So go ahead and check out this video playlist over here on how to edit in Premiere.